to build. I am Rihanna Dillon and we are live from London where today I'm joined by two actors from Channel 4's brand new thriller, Traitors. Please welcome Emma Appleton and Luke Treadaway. <laughs> Hi guys. How are you both? Very well, thank Very you. Very well. Good. You're looking absolutely stunning. Thank you. That, that is a gorgeous so dress. <laughs> also, also gorgeous. <laughs> I assumed you were talking to Emma. <laughs> also gorgeous. But I took that compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you guys want to get involved and ask the guys a question, we would love to hear from you. You can tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. So this weekend was the BAFTAs. Were you watching? I didn't. Didn't you? I didn't, no. Oh, really? No. Come on. <laughs> That's um, such a big deal. You're over them. I just, I like to see the roundup afterwards and kind of watch all the acceptance speeches and, you know, the diluted version of the BAFTAs. And not see, like, the really awkward in-between bits where... Yeah, where they point the, the camera to everyone off. and they're all going, oh, is it going to be me? <laughs> Um, so you know all about winning awards because Luke, you won an Olivier for the curious incident of the dog in the night time. Um, what was that moment like, sort of waiting in the audience for that? Um, well, exciting. The the play had already won, I think, six or something that night. So I, but I was just convinced that I'd be the one person that didn't uh, get it for the play. It was very exciting and totally surprising. Yeah. And that's coming to an end now. Actually, I think the. The curious yeah. yeah i mean I th it's been i don't know what iteration of cast it's in now but there's been a lot in all around the world and um and it's on in london at the moment mm -hmm. for only a couple more months so if yeah. you haven't seen it it's a good show it's it's, it's pretty yeah. it's pretty damn good yeah. <laughs> so have you seen it nope oh my god <laughs> you've got two months left go watch it yeah. <laughs> um and emma we know you from the end of the effing world and clique but this new role that we see you in in traitors is very very different do you sort of prefer historical dramas or modern day set um well, this was my first kind of foray into a period drama. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very lucky to have such kind of... Uh, when I think of period dramas, I kind of assume it's going to be a bit stuffy in a way. Um, and this was not that whatsoever. Um, really, really fun, really exciting. But then modern drama can be really fun as well. So they, they're both as good as each other, I think. It's a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> it's, well, it's true, it's true. I'd say actually the only thing with period dramas is that the costumes and the hair is a bit more kind of exciting because it's not what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Traitors is this very sort of tense spy thriller from Channel 4 and it follows the story of your character, Fief Simmons. Mm -hmm. I love that name. Um, can you tell us a bit more about what it's about? Um, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head with it's it's a political spy thriller. Um, it's set in the aftermath of World War Two, and my character um, she's kind of thrown into this world of spies and secrets, and you know she's really trying to find her place in the world mm -hmm. as well. Um, and she's after adventure is the main thing. And, uh, and Luke, you take on the role of Hugh Fenton. So tell us a bit about him. He's a newly elected MP in the uh, straight after the Second World War. He's been fighting um, in Egypt, and he decides he's going to run for uh, for office to be an MP. Mm -hmm. um, he, him, and uh, Fiefs, their their paths cross. And he sort of, I don't know how much more I can say without giving stuff, stuff away. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they, they sort of are just arriving in Whitehall at kind of a similar time mm -hmm. and um, they meet there. Your characters, like, they clash really, really early on. Mm. Um, you never quite know where you are with them. So when you were reading about them in the script for the first time, what were your first impressions of each other's characters? Well, Fief's just, um, oh, it's an amazing character. I think Bash has written such a great character um and she's just yeah really adventurous really daring brave um and i think yeah i think hugh is quite taken by her quite quickly mm -hmm. um he, he has a fiance at the time so that's a bit of a complicated thing <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um but yeah they they sort of after a few false starts they kind of find a kind of connection later on mm -hmm. yeah i think what's really amazing is that reading the scripts the chemistry was always there it's their ideas that kind of clash but that seems to spur them on almost they'd rather 
disagree but have that dialogue and and be together to disagree rather than not talk at all mm -hmm. and not be around each other well let's see a bit of them in action here's a bit of the trailer It just looks like so much fun. And it's set, so in 1945, just after the war, why do you think audiences are still so fascinated by this period? It's always very exciting. I, I mean, there's a lot of sort of, uh, a lot of things. It's like a melting pot, really, politically and socially at that time, um, end of the Second World War, and uh, just a moment of change, I think, really. Um, the Labour government comes into power and promises social reform and a welfare state and the NHS, and it does those things in two years. It's an amazingly, like, potent time for politics. Um, and then, obviously, you add into that the sort of espionage that was still going on and uh, running from the war. Um, it is just a really great time to kind of look into for, for a drama, I think. What do you love the most about filming something set in the 40s? Because there is so much there. It's so rich, that period of history. Um, yeah, I think it's that. And kind of like I said, with the costume and the mm -hmm. hair and the sets. I mean, when you walk onto it, you are walking into that world. Yeah. Um, I think one of the best sets we had was the cabinet office. Um, and you've got the typewriters and all the stationery. And it's, it's, you know, huge shout out to the props department. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just every single detail makes you feel like you're in that world. Um, and it's such a different time to now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. There's a moment when you're sort of in Parliament and everyone's around kind of waving bits of paper and everything. That must have been incredibly surreal because it... To make a speech in the House of Commons, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it yeah, was surreal. It was a good day. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of words to say in one day and it was good <laughs> to kind of get it done. But I, yeah, I enjoyed it, yeah. It's not every day you can sort of do that. No, exactly. You sort of, it reminded me, you know, of that really famous scene in Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman just kind of walking on set as Churchill. And like, that must have been such a cool moment to be on set, right? Absolutely. Uh, be engaged in such a moment. Um, so Fief is very much thrown into this, a man's world of politics and, mm. and spies. Why do you think she's able to navigate it with such poise? Um... I think that fundamentally comes from her character. Mm -hmm. I mean, she does come from a very aristocratic family. Um, I mean, it's falling apart, but she <laughs> has she has that kind of slight sense of entitlement. And because, I mean, essentially she comes from a family that aren't proud of her. They just want her to marry and settle down yeah. like a woman should in those times. Mm -hmm. And she goes, actually, I'm not, I'm not having any of that. I want to push myself, I want adventure. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what really drives and propels her. And at the basis of her decision to betray her country, there is a sort of love story, right? Or a couple of little love moments. So is that sort of sustained throughout the series or does it fall back a little bit as it kind of becomes more about the politics? No, I'd say that's definitely sustained kind of consistently and they, they kind of feed each other. Mm -hmm. um, which is... Yeah. It's kind of the tension that your character is kind of trying to balance, isn't it, is whilst being essentially a spy on her own government, she's also taken into this kind of relationship with Hugh that she doesn't necessarily plan on happening. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think so that's probably why it's quite hard. She's got her. a lot going on. She's, she's, busy, on she's a busy girl. Busy girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, what struck me when I was watching this was the direction. It's so unusual for this kind of drama, I suppose. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, the like the camera angles for a start. I was like, whoa, what is happening here? I mean, we were incredibly lucky to have... Devla Walsh, who directed the first three episodes, and Alex Winkler, who directed the last three episodes, um, and incredible cin cinematographers who... It was outside the box. It wasn't like, OK, we're going to do a close-up and then yeah. a wide shot. It's like, what can we do with this? How can we make it interesting? Uh -huh. How can we... You know, also working with us, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a much more of a creative process. Mm -hmm. and hopefully a lot of fun to watch because it's not what you're expecting i mean absolutely i mean it starts with a murder and but you're seeing it in such an unusual way it's sort of like this aerial view seeing somebody get suffocated which is just i hadn't really seen that on tv before in mm -hmm. this way mm -hmm. it's, yeah it's very filmic i think yeah. very cinematic and sort of um yeah just 
but both the directors were very brave, I think, the way they, they shot everything. And, you know, you'd be doing a scene and you'd, you'd see the camera going like that. Yes. You'd go, is he all right? <laughs> um, but a lot of hands I love help. the way, I love the, it's just, it's it's the opposite of formulaic, I'd yeah. say. And, um, and then when you watch it, it does, it is quite striking, I think, the yeah. way it's been shot. So, yeah. And let's talk about the rest of the cast. Um, so, first of all, working with Michael Stuhlberg, who, oh, my God, I mean, he's been in so many things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I think he's just so um, phenomenal. There he is in the hat. Um, so phenomenal in Call Me By Your Name, I think was just such an incredible role for him. I mean, what was that like, working with him? Such a fan girl. Oh, you didn't get to work no, with him, did you? you? So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Luke. Um, <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, yeah. No, I was very lucky. Um, I mean... There's very few people, I think, well, actually, we were very lucky on this job where you get to work with someone that really draws you in and mm -hmm. you feel like you're in that moment and you don't feel like you're acting, you feel like it's real. Yeah. Um, and he is that kind of actor and he is so committed to his craft and I learned so much. He's also, he's so lovely, so generous. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was a pleasure. Oh, God. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cool. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, like everyone else is recognisable as well. You've got Greg McHugh from Fresh Meat and Brandon P. Bell from Dear White People. What are the benefits of working with such an experienced cast? I mean, we just, we were really lucky. I think what, you know, when you have a script like we did that Bash had written and you, you have people like Dervla directing it, then you have you know, all, every actor wants to kind of work on stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, we were just lucky and, and the cast, but also all the crew were amazing. It just felt like we were like truly blessed with mm -hmm. everyone on it, really. So, and also, yeah. Keely Hawes, we haven't mentioned, so fresh off <laughs> the bodyguard. I mean, she underwent quite a transformation for this. Can you tell me a little bit more about her character? I hadn't really seen her play this before. Um, I mean, she I is think stripped back. Especially for me. Um, me and Priscilla, or Fifa and Priscilla, have a very intense relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a lot of chemistry there, but she's, I'm working under her character. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just very strong, doesn't kind of hold back, knows what she has to do to kind of work in a, a very kind of male-dominated world. Um, and so she teaches Fifa a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's incredible. Again, such a pleasure to work with, so professional, really knows what she's doing. Did you learn anything from these other actors? I feel like you must learn quite a lot each time you're on a new set or anything, but what did you what? learn from this? I, don't, um, I think all, you're always learning. If you're not, then you should stop doing it. Um, <laughs> but you know, every day on this, yeah, I found it an absolute education mm -hmm. from the actors, and, and but also from the directors. And yeah, I think we were really lucky. Mm -hmm. Um, FIF agrees to spawn her own government on behalf of the Americans and the Russians are sort of in the mix as well. So in an era of Trump and Putin and Brexit, do you think this story is really going to resonate and hit home with audiences? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think there's so many, you know, something can be set in 1945, um, but there's so many kind of current topics and um, ideas and, you know, very kind of like polarised subjects. Um, I hope it's something that does really resonate and kind of gets people talking as well. In one of the early scenes, we see you, Emma, kind of pulled from your bed with like water thrown in your face. Like how much of that was real? That was obviously part of your character's training. How much of that was actually happening? Um, what do you mean? Well, were you being like really thrown? Like, was you oh coming, no, like, no, no, there was a over and again. Um, <laughs> I mean, the the water one. I mean, that we had to kind of figure out to do in like one take because once you're wet, soaking you're wet. wet, you're soaking wet. <laughs> so it's like, okay, let's figure out how this is gonna go and just go for it. Um, so, but it's you know, it's very unusual. You get to kind of do that kind of stuff. This is a lot of fun. And it's set in places like Whitehall and the American Intelligence Agency. What was used for those locations? I mean, Whitehall was Whitehall, <gasps> which was insane. That's cool. <laughs> um, it was just a bit overwhelming because uh, we filmed most of it in Cardiff. Um, yeah, the American Embassy was in Cardiff. <laughs> the American Embassy really? was, yeah, in Cardiff. <laughs> um, but then we got to go to Whitehall to film in Whitehall and, you know, the big kind of round bit that you see yeah. the, drum, the drum the drum thank yeah. you yeah. um so i mean again when else am i ever going to be there with yeah. kind of 1940s cars and people dressed up on bicycles it's again you're walking into that world that 
that's that must have been really special for both of you. Is it, yeah. Is it normally that immersive? I don't know. I think yeah. I think we've touched on it already. But about when when something is set in a different time like that, and it is about the people in the background and the you know the cars that you yeah. have there and stuff like that where you just you feel like you are sort of going into a different time mm-hmm. and it's just it, at the end of the day we're sort of we are putting on a costume and playing make-believe in the way that kids do when they're young and um when you have the kind of effort that's gone into making everything totally right for that time it just it does it it makes it kind of easier in mm-hmm. a way you just talked about the drum. Were there any other sort of like spy terms that you picked up on throughout the making of this? Um, Put you on the spot there. Yeah, I'm the spy, aren't I? Um. <laughs> um. What did you have for a lock pick? Oh, my manicure kit. Yeah. Oh. Because it's, you know, it's sneaky. <laughs> Um, doubles up. Um, <laughs> Please tell me you now know how to pick a lot. I did watch a lot of lock picking videos. <laughs> so I was like, I need to look like I know what I'm doing, which was really fun. Um, and then quickly realised that I would be terrible at it in real life, but can make it look real. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what acting is, right? <laughs> Ultimately. <laughs> um, so you touched on this briefly. It's created. It's created by Bash Duran, who is the writer behind Boardwalk Empire and Masters of Sex. What's it like working with somebody of her experience? Uh, I mean, it, a joy. It, you yeah. know, if all scripts were as good as what I think this one mm-hmm. is, then it would just, you know, it would, we'd be very lucky. She's just, she's a brilliant writer, and um, it just felt like just something that was so complex. All the characters had such interesting journeys to go on. The dialogue felt totally real. Everyone sounded like they were speaking in their own voice, as opposed to just any character could be saying that. I mean, and I just think. Um, I think the whole journey of the the six episodes, I just think, is really massive, and mm-hmm. um, so yeah, she's she's brilliant. Is it quite unusual? You say it's lucky. Is it quite unusual for something of this caliber to sort of, you know, land on your desk for you to get the chance to do? Something? Yeah, I mean, this is this is like I don't know. I think of this as being such a special yeah. piece that I've been able to be involved in. It's um, yeah, it, they're not they don't always come along like this. Mm-hmm. No. Um, now, just before we go, Luke, I hear that you once had drinks with Prince of all people. That's um, true. Can you tell us a little bit how this? How did this happen? <laughs> I went to see him play in Toronto um, uh, with someone who knew him, mm-hmm. and so we went for a drink with him afterwards. Oh and God. I tried to be cool and sort of <laughs> make a couple of <laughs> a couple of inroads into conversation. Didn't really work. <laughs> Um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't like, Luke, Luke, let's hang out afterwards, which I was hoping for. But, um, no, I mean, he's an icon, a musical legend. I love his music. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was so surreal just to sit and have a lemoncello with him. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah. Do you guys ever get spotted? No, no one knows. Not in the no, way that really Prince right. does. No, it's <laughs> not, in not a, the same as Prince. It's Prince's, similar, but, but a little bit less. <laughs> You can still use public transport, basically. Yeah, and get just about. <laughs> um, guys, it has been really, really lovely chatting about Traitors. Sadly, that is all that we have time for. So Traitors is on Sunday at 9 o'clock on Channel 4. We're back tomorrow with the cast of Everybody's Talking About Jamie at 4pm. So make sure that you're around to catch that. But for now, please give it up one more time for Luke and Emma. Thank you. <laughs>